Welcome to Jeopardy. My name is Richard Chavez, and let's meet your contestants. Hi, I'm Caroline. I'm Mackenzie. I'm Grace. Today's topic is brachiopoda. Let's get right into it. Caroline, start us off. Okay, I'll take general information for 400. This is what brachiopod stands for. Uh, what is brachio meaning arm and pod meaning foot? Correct. Now choose the next topic. General characteristics for 500. Give three defining characteristics of brachiopods. What is they are bivalved with bilateral symmetry. They can be from one millimeter to nine centimeters and they're a silimate organism. Great job. Choose your topic. Diversity for 400. These are the two classes of brachiopods. What is articulata which have tooth and groove features of the valve hinge present and inarticulata which do not? Correct. All right, Caroline, choose the next topic. I'll do diversity for 200. Define Lafori. An invertebrate animal with a horseshoe shaped structure bearing ciliated tentacles making brachiopods related to bryoza and oromida. Correct. Great job, contestants. Now we're going to take a little commercial break. Ever wanted a pet that's not hard to take care of? Well, now try a brachiopod. They are the easiest pets to have. Brachiopods barely move and like to hold to the bottom of a stalk or cement themselves to rocks or another creature's shell. They have no physical way to move, so don't even worry about losing them. They live strictly in seawater, mainly living in shallow seas. However, a few live deep in the ocean. The clearer the water, the better the living conditions. Brachiopoda are usually found in cold water, so just dump some seawater in a tank and you'll be fine. Worried about feeding? Don't be, because brachiopods are filter feeders. They feed by filtering tiny food particles from seawater, mainly being plankton. They do this by separating their valves using the muscle inside. Additionally, they use their lephorite to strain the water and cilia to move the food towards the mouth. Now that's an easy pet. Welcome back to Jeopardy. Let's go ahead and get right back to brachiopods. Grace, go ahead and choose the next topic. I'll do reproduction for 400. Explain how brachiopods reproduce. What is they reproduce asexually? That's incorrect. Caroline? What is some produce sexually but externally, and some species actually pick up sperm from the water and fertilize internally? Correct. Interestingly enough, even though the majority of brachiopods are male or female, there are a few that are hermaphrodites. And kids, don't feel sad if you think your parents are ignoring you, because brachiopods have no parental investment beyond production. All right, next topic, Caroline. I'll do life history for 200. Daily Double. This is the age range for brachiopods and the length they travel. What is 3 to 30 years? And because they barely move, the only way to migrate would be to be on the organism they're on or uh, strong currents. Great job, contestants. But we're getting an important message from the National Institute of Brachiopods to give you this breaking news. There has been much debate over whether or not brachiopods are closely related to deuterosomes or protosomes because of the similar characteristics to both. This issue has been a hot topic that scientists have been debating for years. Studies done in 1998 and 2004 concluded that they are more related to deuterosomes. However, studies shown in 2000 and 2001 indicated that they are more closely related to Lophotrochozoa. However, current research leans more towards the sides the side of them being more closely related to deuterosomes. This information could change the world. We have also finally cracked the phylogenetic tree of a brachiopod. Viewers will be the first to see. In our 16S RNA tree, it is found that the most recent common ancestor of brachiopoda is arthropoda. It only has one clad at the end that is made of chordata and mollusca. The data matrix tree shows that brachiopoda has its most recent common ancestor being echinodermata. This tree differs from the 16S RNA tree because it has two clads at the end consisting of Annelida, Chordata, Arthropoda, and Mollusca. We believe the characteristics separating the two trees is the inconsistencies of respiration through gills or lung leg structures, with the RNA sequencing not matching the characteristics that evolved, possibly due to not using enough of the RNA to fully understand the traits that evolved. The discovered phylogenetic tree discusses how brachiopoda have existed over 550 million years as indicated by the fossil records. This tree shows that brachiopoda are more closely related to Poronida and have a recent common ancestor in Malesca. There are currently two hypotheses toward how brachiopods originated. One claim that they evolved through a folding process where a slug-like creature folded over with its shell on both of its sides. The other suggests that a tube-like organism with many plates around its body shortened and became an ancestor to the brachiopoda. 
Both of the phylogenetic trees we created are different from the published trees as this tree was developed by nuclear ribosomal genes in an 18S and 28S sequence giving the authors more information to look at. A unique fact was also discovered. Research has found that they host a variety of parasites that bore into the shell without going all the way through the shell. They actually create these calciferous blisters to prevent parasite from entering through spaces between valves. Now back to Jeopardy. Okay, contestants, are you ready for the final speed round? Let's get started. First question, what era was there the highest abundance of brachiopoda? The Paleozoic era or the Mesozoic era? Go. What is the Paleozoic era? Correct again, keep it up guys. The next question is, how many species of brachiopoda are still alive today? More than 500 or fewer than 500? Go. What is fewer than 500? Wow, you guys are on a roll. <clears throat> are there or are there not an abundance of fossils in the fossil record that show vast diversity throughout the Phanerozoic Eon and up to the Holocene? Yeah. What is there's not an abundance? Okay. Incorrect. Okay. And the last question. Are brachiopods more known on a geological perspective or on a biological perspective? What is geological perspective? Due to the lack of living species and abundance of fossils. Awesome job, contestants. Because brachiopods are so amazing, everybody wins this show of Jeopardy!